It is not unusual after 11 months of care, we finally come to the point that we reap the rewards and our orchids bloom. Of course, we want to do everything in our power to enjoy the blooms for their full duration. But what happens if your orchid is in bloom and you really, really have to repot it? Does that mean you have to compromise the blooms? Will your blooms fade faster? Or worse yet, should you cut the spike because of the repot to help the orchid recover from the stress of the repot? Well, I'm so glad that you asked. And if you didn't ask, I'm so glad that you clicked on this video anyway, supporting the channel with your time. Thank you so much. While I do not like to repot orchids while they are in bloom, because there's a lot that can go wrong during a repot anyway, <laughs> when an orchid is in bloom, the worst case scenario is you would snap the spike. I mean, it is bad enough to pop off a bloom by accident, but the whole spike? That is so annoying. Also, repotting an orchid while in spike adds another dimension of caution, another thing to be aware of so as not to break the spike. But when I go into repots like these, I prepare myself for the possible inevitable that accidents do happen. And if I snap the spike, then I try to take it in stride because I was prepared for the possibility of that happening. Of course, I am annoyed should that happen, but needs must sometimes and mentally preparing myself for the possible of that outcome, at least that lessens the pressure of trying to keep the spike intact. And I don't know about you, but when I approach a repot with an orchid in spike, Usually, I come through the other side with my orchid still in bloom. However, the opposite is also true. When I approach a repot like this with confidence that nothing will go wrong, that is usually when something goes wrong. So, if you're hesitating to repot your orchid while she is in bloom, but she needs a repot because the timing is right, she is in the process of growing new roots, then maybe my approach of que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be, maybe that approach will help you out. <laughs> Preparing for the worst case scenario, staying realistic throughout the repot is the best way you can go about it. Then, at the end of the repot when all is done and you still have your spike, not only was your repot less stressful, but the sense of achievement is heightened. Insert a huge smile here. <laughs> So the question as to repotting an orchid in spike that is usually asked just because she is growing new roots, why not wait until the orchid has finished blooming and then repot? I mean, the roots are active and they will be active a few weeks later depending on the duration of the bloom's lifespan. And yes, if that is what you prefer to do, then waiting is absolutely an option. But of course there's that word again. <laughs> But some orchids have a bloom longevity of a month to several months while at the same time growing roots. So this is what you need to ask yourself and come to terms with. How long are you prepared to wait for the blooms to fade to get into the pot? And within that time frame, how long will your new roots be already entangled in the media of your pot? And what are the risk reward factors of you possibly breaking those much needed new roots because of their length and the fact that they are somewhat established already? My example here with this Prostechia radiata is ideal for this topic because she blooms for at least six weeks and more. How long will the new roots be when the orchid has finished blooming? And knowing that you need to repot XYZ orchid with a bloom duration like that, which is going to be more stressful? Repotting her in the hopes you don't snap the spike or watching the blooms last for so long and knowing you have to get into the pot and seeing the roots grow into the media, knowing full well that the repot is possibly going to cause damage. I don't know about you, but I know that I would not be able to relax and enjoy Enjoy the bloom period the way I would if the orchid did not need repotting. Instead, I would be anxious for the blooms to please, please fade so that I can get into the pot ASAP. But that is just me. Besides, I'm also a huge advocate for repotting orchids while the roots are just in the stage of breaking through the rhizome before they even get to a precarious length. The fact that the new roots on this orchid were already up against the edge of the pot and touching it, by the time I could repot this orchid, that was enough of a headache right there. I don't need them any longer than this. From my perspective, this repot was already a week overdue and, well, you saw at the beginning of the video just what it took to get this orchid out of the old pot while avoiding the abrasion of the root tips against the pot as I tried to release the pot from the roots. 
So this is an extreme example, but this is what can happen. I shall have to make a note of the fact that this specific orchid will produce roots midway through its bloom period so that when I need to address her in the future, I can actually repot her without seeing new roots emerging. This way the job is done and I don't have to sweat it, literally. <laughs> so take the longevity of your bloom duration into account and think about which stress factor you prefer to deal with. Repot after the blooms are faded and know that you have longer new roots to contend with or repot while the orchid is still in bloom and know that worst case scenario is you may break the spike, but your new roots are safe and for yourself weigh out the risk versus reward of the two options. Then, even if you go through the repot with the new roots and your spike still intact, you may have to forfeit the spike if you see your orchid is struggling post repot, that the energy of the orchid with the blooms versus the repot stress is starting to affect the orchid. This is something you can observe on a daily basis post repot. Many orchids that are vigorous, which prostechias are, can handle this kind of intervention and just continue blooming. However, it is always a good thing to monitor the orchid to see if the pseudobulbs are shriving a little too fast. That is when you then have to cut the spike, but many times you will notice your orchid will do just fine. Also, handling the existing roots as little as possible will ensure that they will function and support the orchid post repot. There is no need to do a complete overhaul of the roots that are no longer viable, even in organic media. Taking some of the older roots, even if you think they are no longer viable, into the media and new pot is not a detriment to the climate of the pot or the orchid. Many times, some roots can give the appearance that they are no longer viable and we cut them off. Boom, we've just cut off a viable root. Many times, because we have soaked our orchids before removing her out of the pot, and if we haven't, we should. The roots are soft anyway. So giving them a little squeeze will make them feel as though they are no longer viable, but they still are. Yes, we can pull on the velamen to see what comes off easily, but when it comes to a fine root system like this one, the least amount of fiddling and cleaning is the best course of action. I promise you, your orchid will not suffer any negative effects for the next two or three years she is in the new pot if non-viable roots are carried over. And once again, that includes when growing in organic media. If you want your orchid to continue blooming after the repot and lessen the stress of the repot of your orchid, then leave the existing root system alone as much as you can. I know it's sometimes hard when you see a dead root and you want to start to fiddle, but we all know it doesn't just end with a single dead root. Then we see another one and another one. Anyway, you get my point. Restrain yourself and do as little as possible. Your orchid will thank you and then you can still enjoy the blooms. And the orchid may regulate her bloom duration all by herself. Orchids are smart like that. <laughs> it's possible that you have a shorter bloom duration after repotting because the orchid dumps the blooms without you having done anything wrong. But it is also possible that you're winning in all aspects of a project like this because the orchid will continue growing her new roots. The older roots are not that affected and will continue to do their job and you have your blooms to enjoy now without having to worry how long your orchid is going to continue to bloom while you anxiously watch the roots grow longer and longer and longer. So before the repot, you have hopefully given your orchid a good soak in some calcium nitrate or CalMac with some seaweed added for good measure. And with that, your orchid is already charged and prepared for the repot, but there is no harm in then continuing to apply these two nutrients for the coming month post repot before using fertilizer. This way, you can also help her recover and hold on to the blooms for as long as possible. Just a little food for thought on the side. When we think or have been told our orchid blasted the buds because of a repot, more often than not, they blasted because of some mechanical damage that we were not aware of during the repot. A little bump against a bud can damage the stem where it connects to the spike and we are not aware that happened. Also, when repotting, we move the orchid from its location to somewhere else and possibly there is a bit of a draft there. In my case, I would be outside. And what do we know about orchids that are in bud and drafts? Yep, bud blast. It can happen when you move an orchid while in bud to the sink to flush it or do whatever with it. 
when you move your orchid while in bud, even when you're not repotting it. So if you have an orchid that blasted its bud post repot, then know that it was not necessarily the repot that caused them to blast, but the change of location during the repot. Just a little thought I wanted to add because I have heard it a lot that repotting orchids while in bud will cause bud blast. It is not the repot that does that, but the change of location, possible draft or mechanical damage that we were not aware of at the time. Anyway, that for what it's worth. And if you have any thoughts about that, please leave them in the comments. I would like to hear your take. Now, I am happy to have my radiata ready to go and grow for another couple of years. And if my Caticlia atro walker did not have room for another new growth in the pot, then I would have repotted these two in this video as well, because they are in bloom. They are also in the process of growing new roots. And these blooms also last more than four weeks. So, Note to self, yet another one, repot your caticlias mid-September of 2025 because that is just about the time when the new roots start emerging while the orchid has just opened her blooms. And if you would like to be around for that video, please subscribe to the channel. I know it's a long way off, but I would appreciate your support by subscribing to the channel. And there is so much more content to come, which maybe you may not want to miss. Thank you so, so much. And thank you so much for watching to the end. I get to wish you a wonderful day on the condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.